Okay, so today I'm going to be doing an unboxing on the Mantix two-player battle set. This has got an orc and an undead army in it. So as you can see, it's quite a large box. It also comes with a free robot. At the back cover art for you, you get 90-odd models in here. Not including the orclings. <coughs> open this box it's absolutely jam packed to the top with sprues so but nice invoice from the place I bought it so when we open the box we just get a entire box just full of sprues so we've got our mantic points card we've got our mini rule book and then we've got our minis oh we've got some dice as well and a massive bag of bases so we have our Tengor Riders, I'll get these under close cam in a minute, uh, some Wraiths, some Goblin Spitters, which are basically Goblin Archers, loads of sprues of, these are Ghouls, there's 10 of these guys in here, that's our Orc Command Sprues, more Ghouls, there's Ghoul Zombies and Skeletons in this set. Skeleton sprue there, so I'll get these under the close cam for you to have a look. And lots of bases, 20 and 40 millimeter bases in here. So if you just give me a second, I'll get these under the close cam for you to have a closer look at the sprues. Okay, so starting off, we have five orc axe sprues, so they're all the same. So on here, we have three orc bodies in slightly different poses. We have an orc arm here. And all the arms with their axes and shields. There's a little orkling there. Another little orkling that's sort of laid down. You can put these onto a 40mm square base, which is this one here. And you can get all 30 of them in there. At uh, 13, sorry, not 30. Here's the other side of the sprue. So you've got the back of the orcs. There's one of the orc helmets. Various arms, shields. This orkling's pulling a little moony. That one's obviously laid down so his back's flat. And then we have a orc command. This is the orc command sprue. So we've got a couple of little orcling commanders. One sort of like sticking his tongue out. Another one with a sword. Sorry about the wobble there. And you see is the drummer arm. It's the banner arm. Uh, banner arm, sorry, that that's the banner. Big meat cleaver for the hero, small shield there, the drum, the banner with the dead dwarf's head on, and a arm for it. I love these shoulder pads with the sort of inlaid skulls on there. Really nice. He looks like he's got like a, a teapot on his head. So that's the orc command sprue. We have the Goblin Spitters, there's five of, uh, yeah, five of these to a sprue, there's four sprues. So these are all the, the goblins with their arrow, bows and arrows, all the little heads. Little bits you can put on the bases, like extra quivers and stuff. This guy's got sort of like a sort of like funky thing in his head. I think it's supposed to be like a, a cleaver or something stuck in his head. But uh, that's the Goblin Spitters. Then we move over to the Gore Riders, which are plastic resin. I'll just zoom out a little bit. So, so there's 10 of these guys, and as you can see, this is one of half of one of the boars. And where's part B? I assume part A goes with part B. Is there any different designs of pig? There's slightly different ones. They're ever so slightly different. There's not a lot of difference between them. And then we've got the actual boar head. And you stick the sort of tusks and mustachey thing inside. It'll obviously need some cleaning up first, but a rough idea. Just needs 
bending back into shape but this is the banner and then the actual arms they carry in sort of like lance stroke spear sort of weaponry and this is one of the actual riders very Lord of the Rings esque orc riders these I think quite skinny legs on them for some weird reason but they're pretty good models I like them nonetheless the heads are ball and socket joint so you can actually pose the head whichever way but his head is really tiny compared to his body mass size his head is a little tiny head a little bit of extra cape here might be tempted to actually make a vinyl mold of this so I can make a lot more of these little capes because you only get one in here, I think that's supposed to be for the commander. But we might be tempted to make a Vinamol cape and make some of these out of green stuff and add them to a lot more of my other minis. I think it looks pretty good. Goes on this guy here. And various little shields and bits and bobs. So that's the Orc Gore Riders. So now we're going to start on the Undead. So we've got the Undead Wraiths first. Let me just move this forward a little bit. A bit more light here. Oops, sorry. There we go. So these used to be in metal, now they're in plastic resin. So you guys are carrying sides sort of classic grim reaper looking miniatures there we are quickly pop together for you these guys fly as well in the rule book can't have a can't have a commander without a pointy hand these are like all got like skulls embedded in their robes and there's a guy there who's got a skull held out front of him, there's a couple of guys with maces, obviously another guy with a scythe there, a guy with a sword, that's the wraiths, and now we've got the zombies, the Mantic Zombies Brew, love these Mantic Zombies, they in my opinion piss all over the Games Workshop ones. I really hate the Games Workshop zombies. They are so crap. Probably going to get some flack for saying that, but these are much nicer sculpts. And the amount of extras you get for the price as well is unbelievable. But you get one, two, three, four, five sprues of Zombies, they're all the same, so but there's that many variations on the sprues anyway that you can kind of make them however you want. Good for making unit filler armies for fan fantasy as well, if you were doing them for Warhammer Fantasy. We get five sprues of ghouls as well. There's uh, two of these to a sprue. this mechanical hand here the undead necrotic looking guys I think these are all the same again yeah they are uh, there's that guy who's got like a bag full of hands he must have taken them off his enemies and then lastly we have our skeletons there's two sprues of skeletons here so each one has 10 on. This is your basic skeleton troop. There is a skeleton command spur as well, but there isn't one of them in this set, but I have got one that I'll show you as well. Look for this bit. This is the bits for the champion. Get these little tattered capes as well. You can stick on them. This is the actual back of the music trombone thing. 
the other side's really nice. It's got like a inlaid skull in it. Like it's sort of like a magical spell, magical mu musical weapon. Because obviously they're undead. They don't have lungs, so they can't exactly blow sound out of them. So it's kind of got like a, a cackling skull inside it. There it is. I like these skeletons as well. Really nice. Nice strong connection points on them as well. For those who've built the Games Workshop skeletons, you'll know what I mean with the very poor attempt at connection points that they have. You know, you sneeze next to them and they fall to pieces. So this is the other sprue. We have a little little gimmicky thing we've put on here. This is like a accessory part of the sprue. So we've got like a little pit so you can stick skeletons like bits coming out of there a tombstone uh, a little rat or dog they're not sure what it is in the book they say rat dog thing this you can use it in the game as just to represent a pile of bones but this is actually for the dwarf king's hold game because when you smash up a, a skeleton they can actually come back to life from these pile of bones that's what that's for. It's not actually for Kings of War. The Dwarf King's Hold, but you can use it as a unit filler or base decoration or whatever. So it does actually have a purpose on the sprue. Everything on these sprues has a purpose. They're not just there to look pretty. That little rat dog has rules in the uh, main rule book. So the other sprue you've already seen, I'll just grab the command sprue so you can have a look at that as well. It's a skeleton revenant command. They have like an elite skeleton choice, and these are the revenants, which are the elites. They're wearing much more ornate armor. Let's see if my camera will focus in on it. They've got like engraved patterns on their helmets. Pretty much a very similar sprue to the normal skeleton screws, just they're a bit more detailed. Got very fine sort of like patterns on their helmets and stuff. Nice one. He's a, his whole arm is all engraved with pretty patterns and stuff. But the shields have got a nice big flat canvas shape on them so you can stick decals on them or freehand some work on them. Do whatever you like really. So this you don't get in the set but that's the spare spray I just kicking about that I could show you. So hope you've enjoyed this look at the Kings of War two player battle set. At the moment as well, Mantic are doing an offer for this summer because of their new releases. They've got, you can get that box for £10 off. So it's £39.99 as opposed to £49.99. And you get, I added it up earlier, you get about 20 more models than the Island of Blood set from Games Workshop. And, you know, it's a full, two full legal armies for Kings of War. You, you can't ask much more than that. The Games Workshop one isn't a legal army. So, there you go. So, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, thanks again. And also, this will be kicking off the start of the Mantic Tale of Gamers or Call to Arms campaign. So, there will be details in the description below. So, thank you very much for watching.